Okay, so um, here's an update on the tallow candles. Um, I had just a little bit of, um, just a little bit colder, I think, than what most people's houses are, but that's just because I am cold-natured and like my house a little colder. But these were sitting out um, in uh, room temperature for about a month because I wanted to see what they would do. Long time ago when they first invented tallow candles and these, these hand-dipped candles, no one had refrigerators. You know, how would they store them? So what I did, I kept them in a cool, you know, environment, not, not hot, um, but still room temperature. And when I, when I first made these, they actually were really soft. Like, um, if, if you grabbed a hold of it too tightly, you would, you would squish it. And now you can't do that. Um, now it takes quite a bit amount of force to, to get it to squish. It is just as hard as tallow that has been refrigerated. And that says a lot because if you take tallow out of the refrigerator, uh, fresh tallow, if you take that out of the refrigerator, it gets all gushy and soft. Um, and this has been just sitting here in room temperature. And the only thing that really that has happened is that over time it has kind of uh, been allowed to sort of air out. So a lot of that excess moisture has, I guess, just evaporated. And it's become just as hard as the tallow that you have in your refrigerator. What does that do burning-wise? Well, uh, we assume that burning-wise it will give you a longer burn time because usually the harder the material, the longer the burn time. It may drip less, I don't know. It burned really good before, but it did have, you know, substantially shorter burn time than beeswax. And you can see that flame is, is really steady. I mean, it's not um, really sparking any or anything like I thought fat would do. Just a really steady, very uh, eco-friendly flame. I did not expect it, really. I, I honestly didn't expect tallow to harden um, to this extent. It did take, you know, three weeks to a month, but I didn't expect it to harden at all. So um, that's a little trick you can do. Uh, you don't uh, burn your candles right away. Let them kind of hang there and sit there for a while before burning them. It gets a little bit of the excess moisture out. It just naturally kind of evaporates. And I had my room temperature anywhere between 65 degrees Fahrenheit and, like, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, but most of the time it was below 70. So if you keep your house really warm, I don't know how that would affect, um, you know, ta tallow doesn't, uh, really doesn't take much for tallow to start to melt or half melt. You know, if, if it was a house in the middle of summertime with no air conditioning, um, you know, we would probably just have a puddle <laughs> and not a candle. I'm sure. So, um, temperature does, you know, is, is a factor, but it is technically still room temperature. I had so much, um, joy making these, uh, because, you know, if you think about it, you know, the, the old and timey, the old and very old and timey, you know, um, way that, that people used to make candles is with tallow. And it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, I, I, I enjoy making candles. Every other candle I've ever made, though, was beeswax. I never tried it the old-fashioned way. And so it kind of does it like it sort of just kind of like transports you back in time a few hundred years. And you have to kind of think like they would, you know, if you want the answers. Because I, I tried. I tried to start research, you know, all these answers about, you know, how can we make tallow candles harder? Uh, is there a way to harden them? And I didn't really get a good answer. There was one chemical that someone used, but, you know, I don't want to do that. I, don't, I, don't, I want to do it the old, old-fashioned way um, with just plain tallow. I don't want to use any kind of chemicals or additives. So I did have to think like they did. I had to think, okay, well, if they were storing these, you know, they'd probably be storing these in a cellar um, unless it's wintertime um, or unless they live in a really... Um, you know, uh, Nordic environment, uh, in summertime, I'd imagine that that cellar 
doesn't always stay at refrigerator temperature. It probably is around 60, 62, 65. Um, the amount of humidity, I'm sure, makes a difference as well because um, any time that I would cook, I had some in the kitchen, hanging in the kitchen for a while just to see the difference, you know, with moisture because anytime I would cook, of course, you know, all that steam from cooking, um, especially if you cook like soup or something or rice, all that steam is being let into the air, right? And it would make the tallow candles sweat. I moved them in the back room where they weren't exposed to that humidity and they dried out much faster. But anyway, um, yeah, it's, um, it's something that I will probably be tempted to do again because I enjoyed it so much, even though it took like, I don't know, five times longer than, four or five times longer than beeswax candles, even though I had to, um, kind of learn by error with, with how to, how to keep the tallow, um, from what I call curdling. It's not like, it, it, it's not bad. It, it's not gone to the bad, but it, it gets all chunky if you overheat it and kind of the, the solids will separate from the liquids and it, it won't want to make wax. So I had to figure that out just by trial and error that, okay, this is why my tallow isn't you know, um, making wax anymore. So, um, it took at least two, maybe three times. I can't remember, uh, to get the right temperature. Cause with beeswax, you can do a lot hotter than with tallow before it'll ruin tallow. You know, it's, it's much lower temperature. And also I, I did read somewhere that the prolonged, you know, very hot, temperature prolonged. So if you, if you have the same trough of tallow and you, you put it in the refrigerator when you're, when you're done and then, um, later you want to make more candles with it and then you heat it up again. If you do that many, many, many times and it's too hot, that also can ruin it. So it's best that you make your, all your candles all at once, if you can, with, with that one trough that you're using. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really have to be anything specific. It can be a, a tall, thin pot, uh, which is what I use, um, or it can just be really anything that would hold it once that tallow is melted, and then you do have to keep it, of course, at a liquid, uh, so you keep it at a temperature that it stays at a liquid until you're done making the candles. It took so long to, to make these candles, um, compared to beeswax because each layer has to dry for a much longer period of time than bees beeswax it dries in seconds this takes minutes to dry and so since it took longer i had to spread it out over several day periods and i was heating it up you know reheating it a lot and um, one thing you can't do with towel is get impatient and reheat it too too uh too quickly too hot um, if I had not ruined the first two, three batches, um, of tallow by, by doing it too hot, I'd have a lot more candles. But the good news is, is that I got it in bulk, like 24 pounds, 25 pounds or something like that. Crazy like that. It was cheap. It was at least half the price of beeswax. So I didn't feel like I burned too big of a hole in my pocket because even with free shipping, it was still half the price of beeswax and that's saying a lot so it's it's a great cheap alternative and I, now i've watched this burn for i don't know about 30 minutes total it is a much slower burn a much slower burn than than the soft ones that i lit right after i made um so so this is now about a three weeks to a month later the towel is hardened and it is giving me a much longer burn time so yeah, it does. The, uh, FYI, it does make a big difference on um, letting it harden before you actually use the candles.